Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazeas here from the Automator, and uh, we saw that big news the other day that V1 is deprecated or should be considered deprecated, and V2 is now the official version. So yeah. we uh, we've been working on this for a while, but we we cranked out a course here talking through some of the major gotchas and things you need to know uh, in V2 compared to V1. So this is this doesn't teach you auto hotkey. This teaches people who use V1 what you might get hung up on in V2. That is right, and it is just. Some of the most common ones, it's not like an, an exhaustive <laughs> list, yeah? it's not everything, but I mean the ones that are going to probably affect most of the people. Yeah, so it's actually a course, we'll, we'll put a pretty link up there if you sign up for the, um, if you sign up right now, you'll get 20% off if you choose to buy, so signing up doesn't do anything other than get you notified of when it's actually available, which should be next week. Yeah. Um, you want to show some of what we cover in it? Now remember... Yeah. Those, you know, you don't have to switch to V2. Uh, if we we definitely, our channel, we're going to start doing V2 videos, right? Yeah. Um, coming up here, as soon as we have some in the queue, so you might see some older ones, but we'll be doing V2 videos. And I'll be switching. Zayas had changed a long time ago. This is why I <laughs> leaned on him wholeheartedly to create this course, because I'm like, I, I haven't really gotten used to it yet. <laughs> but, um, exactly. but I do want to emphasize, you don't have to switch, right? You can leave. And, and we're not also, we're not going to go back and update all of our old stuff. That'll stay in V1 because there's a good installer that you can use, right? That is right. And V2, when you install it, you can install it alongside V1. So you can have both. On the same computer you don't have to even change the extension of your files so right. both of them are going to be the hk and the installer already decides which uh version is going to launch based ma mainly with the requires directive and if it cannot detect it from there if you didn't put that it would try to guess it um and if you cannot guess it it would ask you okay which one is the one that you want to launch with this which is another really important thing. What we tell everybody is make sure before you start dabbling with V2, you go through all your current scripts and add the requires V1, whatever, right? And we have a script that does that. I'll put the URL up here. Actually, I, I have it also in the course. So if you follow along, I give you the information about the requires directive, how it works. And I show the script that might help you out on just modifying a bunch of files instead of doing it manually. If you have will, many scripts, it's going to help a lot. It'll try to detect what you know version you're using or it should use when it launches it. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you add that requires, it'll be much more reliable and faster. That is correct. That is right. So uh, as you can tell, we're going to be having our new HKV1 to V2. Uh, you know, make the switch painlessly, which <laughs> that's what we're trying to do. There's going to be some pain involved <laughs> for some people, sure. especially if you're dealing with GUIs. So the point of this course is to guide you. This is not the whole list. This is just a basic outline. There's a few more things that are covered in the course. It's actually a two-hour course. So there's a lot to cover. We are going to start with the editors that support B2 at the moment and which one we recommend and why we recommend it. Yeah, it's a short list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right now it's a short list. We have a section for configuring the auto hotkey launcher when you install V2. We have the requires directive that I was mentioning, what it is, how to use it, and the tool that we refer. Uh, there's a few more gotchas here. Like for example, there is no more automatic including of library files. I'm gonna explain a little bit in depth what that means. And I'm gonna give you examples of how that might affect you. The same with the fact that variables can be set or unset. That is a concept that in V1, we didn't have it that way. So it is good to know what that means and how to use it. And what will happen if you don't, uh, if you try to access variables that are not set. Uh, we talk and discuss a little bit about the, er uh, the errors and warnings that you're going to get. You're going to get more of them now because AutoHot kv 2 is a little bit stricter. And uh, not only why, how they are better because they are actually better in v2 but what is the correct way of doing your stuff so that you don't get that many warnings and you know they're a little bit annoying we get it uh, but they're not the problem the problem might be somewhere on your script so <laughs> the next one would be the assignment operands uh, a little bit of info on that what the difference is what is the default now what you cannot do 
uh, the fact that everything is an expression that's uh that's the one of the things that is gonna uh trip a lot of people up uh the difference between or well not the difference but the god sent feature <laughs> that is how single quotes and double quotes uh and the fact that each can escape each other and how that makes your life a little bit easier with examples we, we talked about that roughly today in, in a couple of our calls and i didn't say it but my, when i was learning python i was always so jealous that you could <laughs> use either single or double quotes to encapsulate your text yeah and, right. and now finally in v2 we'll be able to do that so I am. that is correct uh, we're going to talk a little bit about continuation sections, the auto execute section of your script, which that second one, the auto execute section is really important to understand. And I'm just going to give you good news is better in V2. <laughs> that's, that's something that even today when we were talking to Hellbent, uh, he, he, I, he was asking, okay, hold on. So if you put the hotkeys there, is, is that not going to, and I said like, no. And he was like, oh my God, that's good. Like, <laughs> it, it is. It's funny because we keep saying V2 for complete noobs that don't use auto hockey at all, it's going to raise the bar a little bit higher compared to V1, right? There's a little right. bit more it's going to get you started. However, I, I will agree the fact that the, the auto exec section for the most part goes away. Um, it's it's much simpler. That will help people I'll learn it faster. Yeah, because it's where a lot of people get stuck. Especially when you're merging scripts yeah, or absolutely. including other scripts, you're no. going to find this issue right away. But now in V2, that is not going to be an issue. Uh, there are very big changes in the ways how you hot keys and hot strings are created, especially the multi-line ones. And I go uh, and give some explanations as to why, and hopefully that makes sense. Actually, I noticed that with Hellbent as well. When I mentioned that hot keys are no longer labels, it clicked for him right away. It said, oh, that makes sense now why I need the braces, because now braces are required. Uh, how global variable works. And again, that was something that was mentioned in the call today. Um, yeah. They were like, okay. And then they were a little bit confused about it. Yeah, that's a big gotcha. It you is a big, that. Yeah. big change. Yeah. If you don't understand what is going on with that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you uh, make some mistakes that uh, you're not used to. But again, and this is something that I would say several times during the course, if you have somewhat of a programming understanding, even in other languages, you will find this change like similar to those other languages. Well, so it's not a weird change. It's, it's, it's just, why most people who are programmers, when they see V2, they love it. Right. It does, it does make a lot more sense to them. It's much more similar to other programming languages. But I so, guess to your point, like for example, V1 was was mainly for people who don't program. Right. right, right. Now, uh, the problem with them was that as soon as they started trying to do things that are a little bit more complex, now you're getting into programming. The right. language was not helping them. Now, when we make the language a little bit more toward a programming sense, yeah, those new people are not going to jump into it as easily as the but other language yeah. once they get going it'll be less because the, the example where lexicos gave us the whole that that thing that you said you love so much with the yeah with the equal sign yeah yeah right how many exceptions there are just and that, and that was thing. done to get a, to to you know makes make it easier to do a lot of stuff and now he's removed a lot of things that are ambiguous or things that are confusing and it yeah it definitely is going to make it easier um in, in a lot once again Maybe not the first couple of weeks of using auto hotkey, but after you get going for maybe six months, it'll be much easier to get better. And let me clarify something. Even in that particular sense that it is a little bit higher, the bar is a little bit higher, it's still really low compared to any other language out yeah, there. Fair enough. If you try, if you try any other programming language, even Python, which is one of the ones that is kind of like the easiest ones to learn. To me, auto hotkey looks a little bit easier to follow than Python code. So even, even if <laughs> it is still a low bar, right? Um, and the last two commands cannot start with the comma and you cannot put a space between commands and their parentheses. Those are things that even if I explain them just by talking, I don't think you're gonna get grasp the full idea. In the video, I go into a little bit more detail, some examples get you to understand what really is going on and why you should care, how it will affect you. 
and how to go about it, because most of the videos that I'm going to show there is not only about talking about the problem, is what you should do to make it easier on yourself. Most of the times, it has to deal with the tool that you're going to be using, which is the editor. A lot of the problems that are new in V2, the editor is going to help you out greatly. So picking a good editor is going to help you out a lot. So let us know with it. Are you guys switching? Like, please comment below if you plan on switching. What's your status? Have you already made the switch? If you made the switch, you're probably not watching this video. But <laughs> even for some people, they still might like to, you know, have a guide. But um, right. yeah, so let us know what you think. Sign up for the course now. You get 20% off. We're thinking, I think the course will be, the list price will be $60. We'll have it on sale for like 30 and then they'll still be 20% off of that. So yeah, so it's going to be a very low price. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching and like the video if you found something useful.